Welcome to Hobby Hardwood Alabama, a mom and pop operation that produces some of the finest grade hardwood lumber in the country. Hey folks, welcome to today's episode of Sawing with Robert. We're going to talk about a planer. Now we've got two planers. We got the big gulp, which everybody's familiar with. Um, then we also have this small Powermatic. It's a 21 inch um, spiral head, single side. You gotta have a planer hooked up to a dust collector because the chips will get pinned. They'll, they'll be recycled. They'll get pinned between the pressure rollers and the boards and they'll leave little divots like uh, frosted flake looking divots in the surface of the boards. The reality is that's just your planer is not getting the chips cleared fast enough. And if you see those frosted flake looking dents in your wood, well, you're gonna have to go shopping because you're gonna need a bigger dust collector. Powermatic makes a really good planer. I'm not gonna get into the whole planer wars and manufacturer wars and stuff like that. Some of the better manufacturers are buying it from ISO certified facilities, which makes them bring their manufacturing to another level. A lot of the better companies will bring those parts in. Uh, for example, Powermatic will bring the parts in. They will refinish them. They will refit them. They will regrind them. They will put true bird spiral cutters on. They do a lot of things that you won't get if you buy a pure knockoff planer where a lot of times the holes won't even line up because I've, I've done that before. Before you start wondering, no, I am not sponsored on these videos. I get nothing for these videos. I think I make six bucks a video, which isn't enough to pay for the electricity to erase the SD card that goes in the camera. This is a seven and a half horse, 220 single phase. Hor uh, planers are rated in depth and width of cut. And I'll tell you right now, it's not at the same time. If you buy a planer that says it can do 16 inches wide and an eighth of an inch, then you gotta break that in half. It will do 16 inches wide and it will do one eighth of an inch, but it won't do it at the same time. It'll do an eighth of an inch, six inches wide on a six inch wide board, then it'll do 16 inches wide and you're taking a 64th of an inch off of it. So with planers, horsepower is king. You, this planer, seven and a half horse, uh, 21 inch wide, will take an eighth of an inch off at full width if I slow it down. And that's all I can ask of it. So anyway, let's look inside one of these things, kind of show you what really matters in a planer. This one has two speeds. It's got a 20 feet per minute and a 30 feet per minute. 30 feet per minute is kind of the industry standard for the best finish per feed rate. Sometimes that's going to be a little bit high if you're taking deep cuts, wide cuts. Or you've got sticky wood, so to speak, or wood that doesn't like to plane, doesn't shear well. So you drop down to the 20, a little bit slower, a little less load on the motor. A lot of planers have bed rollers. Basically what that's saying is that if you've got bed rollers, then the board's not touching the bed. So don't bother buying a long bed planer if you've got bed rollers in it because the board's touching the rollers, not the bed. Unless you have a way to drop the rollers quick. So let's crank. Well, it's nice weather out there. The world's a great place, blah, 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 blah. Damn. I would say if you can get one of the auto up and down, it's probably worth your money. If not, just keep on cranking. I'm trying to get this down so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All righty. There's one. 
there's one. And what they do is I, it's I move this lever, right? Let's see if I can get a shot of it all. See how the rollers go up and down? When they're down, the wood will slide directly on the bed. That will give you the flattest possible board. However, you cannot plane rough sawn wood with the rollers down because the board is so rough it grabs on the cast iron. In that case, for rough sawn, you want to raise the rollers. These spin, these are not motorized, they spin, and they provide a bearing surface so that the rough sawn wood will feed cleanly. When the rollers are up, you'll get snipe equivalent to the height of the board because it's not touching. So when it exits over there, it's going to drop down and you'll see a little bit of snipe. Bed rollers, if you're going to be doing any kind of rough sawn planing at all and really nice finished planing, highly recommend adjustable bed rollers for whatever machine you buy. Let's undo these guys. Anytime you take, you open your planer, put the fasteners right on the bed, little safety tip. That way you don't ever forget that they're there. So every planer is gonna have pretty much the same stuff, but different levels of it. So start at the front. First thing you're gonna have is you're gonna have some anti-kickback devices. And if you want to know why you need anti-kickback devices on a planer, then you've never been shot in the stomach with a planer. Basically, these little teeth go in there, and then if the board kicks back, it'll grab it. It's called the front feed or pressure roller. The thing that you might notice is it's not one continuous roller. It's called a segmented roller. And this is typical of the higher-end single-sided machines because you can put a board of, of, say, an inch thick over here, you can put a board say an inch and an eighth over here and since these rollers are segmented or they're small they're in like two inch lengths these will flex up these will flex at a different level these will grab the top of one board these will grab the top of another board and you could feed multiple boards in at one pass the planer doesn't care um, if you were to just simply put two different height boards into a solid infeed roller, then it's gonna grab the high board, not the low board, and it's just gonna feed one, and then it will feed the other. Uh, a better machine like this, you can feed as many boards as you've got the width to eat if it has a segmented infeed roller. Then we have the cutter head. Uh, this is a uh, bird head and if you ever really want to know how you know it's a bird head it'll have a picture of a bird in the corner of the cutters and yes carbide cutters last a long time but they do wear out they are a total pain in the butt to change uh, basically what you the process is you take each cutter out when well, you take them all out at once and then you clean the entire cutter head you got to get all the sap off of it. Then you rotate the, the cutters 180 degrees. You never go 90, you go 180, 180. Then you'll have to go 90. And that keeps the, uh, the cutter tracks out of the wood. This piece of metal here, this is called a pressure bar. Extremely important. Some planers do not have these. The better ones will. This is what keeps the snipe out of your boards. And this is, this adjustment is the most important adjustment you can make on your planer. It's the height of your pressure bar. So what this does, if you can see it in there, you can see it loops around the cutter. And as a board goes through the machine, at the very end, it comes, this edge comes off the front roller. And that means that it's only being held by this down pressure roller and the board is gonna act like a diving board, a cantilever, and it's this end is gonna flip up into the cutter and gouge out that hunk of wood and that's where the snipe is coming from. That's why it only really happens on the beginning and the end because you're only supporting the board 
if you're feeding it on one roller, if it's leaving on one roller. So the distance from here to here is the distance that you're gonna get snipe on your board. However, a machine like this has this pressure bar and it's adjusted so that it never touches the board while it's being planed. It's about one thickness of a coat of paint above the cutter heads. This board to try to flip up when it leaves, but it's gonna hit the top of the pressure bar. That keeps it from gouging into the cutter and it reduces the snipe. Now, one thing that you might notice is uh, a lot of the industrial planers don't use permanently sealed ball bearings, they use lubricated ball bearings. So you pour oil in this thing about every week or so. The reason you do that is when you're in an outdoor environment like this, you can get condensation in the bearings and uh, they will rust out or they'll corrode out. Over here, twin belt, nice change. Again, the, the main takeaway is notice how clean it is. There's no chips. see what they look like when they're running, this is it. Very smooth, very quiet. You see the front roller running, so this chain feeds the front feed roller. This chain feeds the back. They both float up and down. Uh, this is the main cutter. It's got two belts on it because it draws a lot of power. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.